समय कम है गुड मॉर्निंग सर गुड मॉर्निंग जी साहब प्लीज सुन यस निवेदिता दास यस सर निवेदिता यू आर बी टेक यस सर राइट इन सिविल इंजीनियरिंग यस सर tell me what is happening in joshimat sir joshimat uh, the land there is a land subsistence that is happening mm -hmm. uh, isro report say that in the last few years it has sank by 5.4 cm so um, it is uh, because the uh, because of the topography uh, number one it is in a uh, uh, it is in a fluvial deposit uh, deposits of landslides the soil condition uh, is uh, such that uh, uh there is uh, subsistence because uh, because there is uncontrolled expansion and developmental activities uh that has not uh, uh taken into account uh the soil condition uh, the, uh therefore there has been a land subsistence sir where is it located joshimat uttarakhand sir where in uttarakhand any idea uh so i have uh, it is i have no idea altitude not exact altitude uh, so i have do not have an exact idea but uh, any close by significantly known places so the uh, kedarnath uh, the char dham is nearby uh, kedarnath badrinath uh, uh, these what should we do about it uh, so i think uh, the reports that have uh, reports that were given earlier that should be taken into consideration mm -hmm. uh, several reports had said that uh, expansion uh, and developmental pro uh, projects should be limited uh, so that the report should be taken into account number 1 two uh, the uh, developmental activity should be should take into account the soil condition uh, and uh, three uh, rather than uh, Uh, materials for example rather than uh, concrete uh, we can use locally available materials uh, like uh, bamboo etc for house construction is it practically possible to restrict expansion uh, so uh, not so much because i think uh, uh, even the char dham highway construction is going on there mm -hmm. uh, but Uh, somehow i think as the supreme court had also said in the uh, char dham judgment that developmental uh, development and uh, sustainable development uh, and uh, 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 the environmental conditions that should be balanced and so i think we should strike a balance between the both if you you have a you are in a position to influence policy yes sir what would you suggest uh so i would uh, number one i'd suggest that uh, entire uh, survey of the area should be undertaken and if it is already undertaken then such reports should be studied effectively uh, survey in terms of the soil condition survey in terms of in which areas the uh, in which areas are more prone and which are not uh, number one number two the uh, tapogar tapogan vishnugar project that is there so uh, there has been an uncontrolled expansion of dams as well so i think uh, the the reservoir level in the dam that should be uh, done in a certain way that the the power is also generated as well as uh, the full reservoir capacity is not utilized if it is if already you know we cannot destruct already constructed dams uh, okay thank yes, you sir. let's let's move to another subject yes, you sir. are a blogger yes sir your papers what do you blog on what are the subjects of your blogs uh so i have a blog on medium so i write about things that i feel uh whatever i feel on a day to day basis so, so what are what are your concerns at the moment which you generally address in your blogs so my most recent blog uh, was on uh, the parallels of covid and patriarchy mm -hmm. uh, so i uh, you know somebody in my family made a, a, a like a uh, just a passing comment that patriarchy is similar to covid mm -hmm. and i somehow find found certain similarities and that's what i wrote about like uh, uh, even uh, patriarchy they does not if there is a husband who uh, who there's domestic violence etc they don't um, 
love the wife, but but they don't leave it also. Like COVID, they, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. it uh, comes into our body, but it's possessive of our body. But it it does not love us, but it, it is possessive. Um, also, uh, COVID, uh, it kind of uh, uh, it, there were many uh, variations. Even now, we are talking about a new uh, COVID variant. So patriarchy also, um, it, it kind of varies. Everybody has a different experience mm -hmm. with it. So yeah, so I, that's what I wrote about. And I thought uh, the, my uh, uh, concluding remark was that uh, COVID, at the end of the day, it either kills us or, it, or we get over it because of our antibodies. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, women, either they should, uh, I mean, not get killed, but they should come out at least because what happens is that uh, there's no conclu conclusion like COVID. It, it kind of goes on. So women should come out, is what I felt. Which is your platform for? Which platform are you use for uh, writing blogs? So I write on Medium. It is, uh, it is a paid platform. Like you, if users want to see my content, they have to pay to Medium. Although I'm uh, not a, I, I do not earn from there as yet. There are a considerable uh, qualifications that are required, like the number of people who follow me, etc. There's an opinion that social media is uh, causing more harm than yes. good yes, to sir. social harmony in the country. Yes, sir. Any, your opinion? Uh, right, sir. This uh, has been a lingering uh, thing uh, in the past decade uh, because of the expansion. Um, although I think uh, it, it has been a source of disruption in terms of hate speech, in terms of uh, people coming out uh, uh, for example, even in the farmers' protest, uh, we saw in the Red Fort there was disruption and social media had a role to play in it in collecting people. Uh, but at the same time, we saw that uh, it has also led to so many benefits. Uh, for example, even I prepared for UPSC from my home in Guwahati mm -hmm. and I had access to all these resources uh, through media only. So I think uh, it has helped as, as well as it has uh, not helped. So uh, a balance must be struck and the people who are using it, that, that is the most important solution. Can we do something to make it more responsible? Right, should, sir. That, you know, sir people I should not get a totally free hand to say whatever they want. Yes, sir. Hmm? Right, sir. What sir, can be done? Sir, that the problem lies in the platform versus publisher debate because social media platforms, they say that we are not generating content and we are not responsible for it. Mm -hmm. So to actually solve this, I think uh, the social media intermediary guidelines that were given mm -hmm. uh, in 2021 that, you know, you are, you are a publisher, but you, if you have a significant presence, you are a platform, but if you have a significant presence, you are also sort of a publisher. So they have uh, given certain guidelines like uh, you have to uh, see what all material is given out in your platforms. Should certain. government have the power to uh, restrict social media? <coughs> Right, so again, it uh, it uh, kind of comes to this that uh, you know the f right to freedom of speech and expression. So I, uh, but I think sir, the uh, social media is a rapidly evolving thing. I think we are moving generations in a matter of two days nowadays because new technology is coming in at such pace. So I don't uh, think that we have a we have like a concrete solution as yet on who should win and how should it be done. But I think as we go move forward and uh, as we know more about things, I think uh, that like government should have a limited control. But at the same time, there is no concrete solution. I think it will evolve as we move forward. Thank you, dear. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Nivedita, you seem like a bright uh, candidate. Uh, thank uh, you, sir. Your comparison of uh, patriarchy with, uh, uh, with yes, COVID sir. is rather interesting. Yes, sir. But do you think that patriarchy is also going to destroy the human race, just like COVID is trying to do? Uh, sir, I don't think it will destroy because patriarchy has existed since, since the later Vedic times and it's, uh, mm -hmm. I think the women race has still survived. Later Vedic time is which, where do you find reference to patriarchy in our Vedic uh, scriptures? Uh, so not exactly patriarchy, but in, in the Rig Vedic times, women mm. were allowed to attend the sabhas and uh, <coughs> village committees. But slowly mm. in the later Vedic times, that kind okay. of it started. So. All right. Uh, yes. Uh, 
let me get to really uh, the forum. You have read the newspapers today, I'm sure. Uh, sorry, sir, I couldn't read it today. Why? Um, so I, uh, uh, I almost like forgot to when I had to come. Home. I hope you don't forget to get to the center for interview. No, sir. I'm sorry. I hmm. should have read, yes, sir. But uh, I have been reading on a daily basis, sir. All right. Let me uh, assume that you. Uh, what are the problems in the Indian-Russian trade these days? Have you read about the Indian-Russian trade, particularly in the wake of the Ukraine war? Yes, sir. What is the structure that we are following there? Tell me. Uh, the India-Russia trade, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so, in like we have procured substantial amounts of oil mm -hmm. from Russia, and because uh, we are not trading in dollars right now, so we are uh, uh, having. Uh, uh, an, an account, I am forgetting the name, sir. Nostro Vostro account. It's called an escrow account. Uh, mm. Yes, sir, escrow mm -hmm. account, mm -hmm. where uh, we are paying in rupees, mm -hmm. and then it, there's, an, there's a bank account of Russia in our bank mm -hmm. where we are paying, and okay. when we procure. All right, I, un yes. I understand. Yes. Uh, but there seem to be some problems coming up in that, Russian, in that arrangement for trade with Russia. Yes. Are you aware of it? Uh, in that arrangement, sir, I am not completely aware of it, mm -hmm. sir. I, like, uh, we have been uh, uh, told that India is sitting on a fence, we are procuring oil. Mm -hmm. That the geopolitical issue part of it, mm -hmm. I know, but... Uh, okay, can't let me give you, uh, and then I'll uh, talk about it. Yes. Sir. Russian exporters, including yes. the government, Russian government, Yes. they are trying to pay the government of India in yuan. Yes, sir. Because China pays them in yuan. Yes. Sir. And yuan doesn't go anywhere. Okay. So, what will be the if Russia wants to pay us in yuan? Right. Can sir. you just think now and tell me what will be the impact on the trade? Uh, right, sir. If Russia wants to pay us uh, pay us in yuan, yuan then, is uh, you know which current country's currency is it? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. China. Yeah. China. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So then, uh, I think with that yuan, we will have to trade with. Uh, China mm -hmm. or any other country that uh, China has close relations with Pakistan or Saudi Arabia for that matter. So with uh, we already have a 100 billion trade deficit recently newspaper report said it with China mm -hmm. and we are trying to uh, kind of uh, move away from that by make, make in mm -hmm. India and assemble in India and all of that. So I think it will be problematic. However, uh, we, we can find solutions to it. Uh, uh, probably, uh, I think, sir, uh, do uh, not able to think of mm -hmm. it, sir, right now, but I think that will be problematic, sir. Okay, yes. all right. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, what do you understand by the plurilateral world order? Right, sir. Uh, and where does the strategic autonomy fit into that? Right, sir. So, plurilateral world order means that there are multiple powers in the world and power is not concentrated in a single region. Like for a long time, USA mm. was a unilateral power and now we see uh, China rising up, the global south uh, that has been in news recently, everybody is mm. uh, kind of making their own space. And strategic autonomy, uh, so I think, uh, fits perfectly with the plurilateral order because uh, because every if everybody is powerful and there are multiple regions uh, where power is dispersed, I think everybody can maintain uh, who they mm -hmm. want to align with and when. Like India is now following a multi-alignment strategy where we are part of the Quad uh, as well as we are part of uh, groupings like the SCO. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think uh, India provides the perfect example of plurilateralism along with strategic autonomy. Okay, one, one last question. Yes, sir. Uh, have you read that the minister uh, for, for external affairs minister Jai Shankar yes. is planning to visit uh, Sri Lanka sometime in future? Uh, so I, I have uh, not uh, read about it. Mm -hmm. but, uh, what, uh, given the fact that Sri Lanka has been actually getting closer to China yes, and sir. its economic problems, yes, sir. do you think we should? Further develop our relations with Sri Lanka at this stage. What? How will it? How will it benefit us? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, Sri Lanka is getting closer to China, 
and port development projects etc are happening. Um, however, I think India has always followed a neighborhood first policy and um, uh, we should uh, c uh, continue our relations with Sri Lanka in the same gusto that we have in all these years because uh, number one, it is part of our neighborhood. Number two, it is uh, it has a strategic position and uh, we need to continuously, uh, if China is coming, then we also need to continuously maintain our friendship to uh, kind of uh, defend that. All right. Yes. Good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Miss Navedita. Yes, sir. You like stand-up comedy. Yes, sir. Who is your famous, uh, most popular stand-up comedian from your point of view? Um, so there are I follow uh, many comedians, but uh, so favorite right now would be Ashish Solanki. Um, he performed in there's a show called Comic Stan. He performed there, uh, and uh, I find his observations on life uh, very beautiful. Like uh, there's this one observation where he said that unemployment is such a, a huge problem these days, and whatever becomes huge becomes cool as well. So what if unemployment becomes cool and people who are unemployed now make fun of the employed? So I think it was in a funny vein as well as an important life observation. Right. So you tell me, yes, how has uh, OTT now, very popular, mm -hmm. how has it, uh, has it impacted the stand-up comedy scene in the country? Right, sir, it has. Uh, oh. OTT platforms have provided a new arena for stand-up comedians where multiple shows as well as their uh, single uh, comic shows like one performer performs for an hour or so. So such, uh, they have got multiple avenues right now and just 10 years back, uh, the profession did not exist in India in terms of what it does now. So I think uh, social media, first it was the YouTube which provided uh, people with that area. But what is the disadvantage? Right, sir. The disadvantage is, of course, sir, number one, that uh, hate speech. Uh, sometimes comedians have been accused of hate speech. Uh, number two, uh, there has also been a uh, dissent <coughs> from certain groups, religious groups as well, where uh, comedians have uh, where such groups have accused comedians of hurting their religious sentiments, etc. So sometimes it creates disruptions in terms of so show cancellations as well as protest, etc. Um, however, I think uh, as the High Court of Delhi had in our judgment regarding stand-up comedy had said uh, that uh, satire uh, is a way of making uh, the society see its own image like a mirror image. And comedians are entitled to use satire and exaggeration to that effect. Right. Um, however, on a case-to-case -case basis, if that line is uh, crossed, I think action should be taken. All right. So, you tell me, you are also someone who is entering the corporate sector. Yes. Now you are going there, you are yes, a trainee, sir. somewhere, trainee engineer. Uh, so no, sir, I, uh, I left the job, sir, Achha, in 2020. Achha, but you have some idea about it. Yes, sir. You know, there is a lot of talk about gender diversity, that more women should be there. Yes, what is the advantages of having more women at the top, in the right. corporate sector, in the boardroom? What is the advantage? What is the advantage? Uh, right, sir. Hmm. So, um, I have worked with NHI DCL for a year, which is uh, the National Highways Infrastructure Development. So. Uh, in the highways, there, there were a uh, very less number of women. In my entire office, I was the only one girl uh, for that period when I worked. So the advantage which I felt during that time, number one, is that um, it, it brings more uh, inclusiveness where people are also able to approach. Uh, for example, in the contractor side or in the, uh, our uh, consultancy, there were women. Uh, and now when they came to our office, uh, Sometimes they would feel deprived. Sometimes they would be patient. brief to the point. Yeah, more yeah. give more points. Yes, sir. So uh, they, there were certain issues that the women were facing, and when I was there, they felt more nicer to say that. So number one, uh, that inclusiveness. Number two, uh, uh, it brings more representation because if women are fifty and men right. are fifty. Right, I understood. Next. Yes. Number three, sir. Uh, it. Uh, number three. Uh, Okay, no problem. I'm no not problem. able to think okay. right now. So, uh, not a problem. Yes, sir. So, 
you know what can be done right. obviously you are not very happy with it you would like more women what can be done yes sir so uh, number one uh, the boardroom quota that uh, germany had provided a boardroom quota that uh, this number of women should be women india can go forward with that in all major companies number one so how many women should be there according to you sir i think if not equal at least uh, i because sir in why board, not equal why not equal sir uh, fr like uh, for to reach the boardroom also sir women have to be encouraged at the grassroots so uh, for example what happens in the judiciary also that if more, less number of women are in the uh, starting positions to reach the boardroom also is a problem so for starters i think for now uh, we can uh, at least give uh, uh, if not equal at least if there are two men there should be one women for now because even to reach the boardroom it will take time number 2 uh, two there should be a vision for the next 30 40 years that more women should reach the okay. top so has the government done anything uh, gov uh sir in the uh, for example in the uh, companies act uh, th there should be there should be a certain number of women at uh, in the director positions that has mm. been what done. does it say how many um so i'm not able to recall exactly okay. but One, anything else government has done uh so any uh, women candidates are also encouraged uh, to apply in uh, for example in upsc they are exempt from the fees uh, to fill up the forms etc uh, yes. all right thank you thank yes. you okay nivedita yes sir you are from assam yes sir uh in assam you have a lot of bamboos yes sir Lot of bamboo. Yes, sir. Have you heard about National Bamboo Mission? Yes, sir, I have. What is this National Bamboo Mission? Uh, so the National Bamboo Mission. Uh, so I'm not uh, completely recalling it, but it aims to develop bamboo clusters in several regions and develop it uh, so that uh, it it can cater to uh, the local uh, development as well as for the uh, industrial development. what in your opinion is uh, the status of bamboo in assam how they are go how they are affecting the common life uh, of the common people right sir so bamboo is uh, integral part of the assamese uh, life as well as culture so number one uh, people use bamboo even in meghalaya as in drip <coughs> irrigation method uh, they make small holes in it number two is that uh, uh, we use bamboo in several of our handicrafts number 2 it is also used as a uh, pickle uh, as a bamboo shoot pickle that is uh, uh, manufactured at by self uh, self help groups etc okay. yes sir okay uh, uh, have you any idea but you have any idea about uh, how much uh, area of india per se is under bamboo uh, so area of india so i have not area of india Like the forest <coughs> under bamboo yes sir so uh, i am not able to recall oh. the entire india but in north east 67% of india's bamboo is found sir 67% yes and uh, what is uh, your opinion of late the bamboo area is decreasing or increasing uh, sir it is decreasing uh, mm. because in north east Uh, also in total forest area is uh, it's uh, is also decreasing in northeast uh, have you have you have you, uh, have you heard about this forestry report uh, yes sir uh, indian uh, state of the what is what is the uh, percentage of forest area at present uh, sir it is 21.71% 21.71% yes okay um, uh, you have one national park kajiranga national park in your state yes sir so, why it is famous for it is famous mostly for the one horn rhinoceros one horn rhinoceros yes sir are there two horn three horn rhinoceros also uh, sir there are two horn rhinoceros so, uh, it is found in indonesia in two the, horn rhinoceros when they are found uh, no, assam you don't have them in assam in assam no sir no so where they are found in indonesia sir the javan and sumatran rhinoceros are two horn two horn yes of late this sumatran rhino is in problem it mm. was in problem why it is in problem uh sir 
uh, if I'm not wrong, the forest uh, area was degrading or something like that. Okay. Right? Does so it, I'm not you, sure. You are not sure. Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, tell me one, one thing. Uh, what do you think? Because there is a huge tea industry also in Assam. Uh, sir, tea industry, tea yes, industry. Yes. What are the challenges they are facing nowadays? Nowadays, the tea industry of Assam. What are the challenges they are facing? Right, sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, number one, uh, most of the uh, tea industry in Assam is small tea growers, like mm -hmm. in the entire India. Mm -hmm. So, small tea growers have uh, certain issues like access to machinery, etc. But uh, but you have big big companies also having uh, their own tea gardens over there. Yes, sir. We have Duncan's big and all those. So there are big, big tea gardens also. Yes, but sir. overall, the entire uh, overall, industry is facing problems. Why? Yes, S yes, sir. Hmm. Sir, one is the uh, the, uh, the na laborer issue as well, hmm. because wages have been increased by a consultative committee with the government. Uh, in it is around two hundred and twenty right now. Hmm. However, in the southern states of Kerala and Tamil Nadu, uh, the laborers get more wages. So hmm. there has been large scale migration of tea. Uh, plantation laborers from Assam to the southern states. Mm. So that labor problem is there. Second, uh, sir, uh, there, there have been also large scale unionization of the laborers for which uh, the, the certain problems are faced. Uh, production? So anything on linked to production of the tea? Uh, sir, production uh, of tea? No. Uh, anyway. One or two days back, yes, sir. one river cruise has started yes. from Banaras. Where is it going to end? It is going to end in Dibrugar, sir. In? Uh, in Assam. In Assam, it is yes, going sir. to end in Dibrugar. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, have you heard something about lifestyle for environment? Yes, sir. What is lifestyle for environment? Sir, lifestyle for environment has been promoted by India, especially our Prime Minister. Mm. It is about living in sync with the nature. Mm. So, uh, rather than uh, rather than trying to uh, remedial measures for the uh, for the uh, correction of what we have done, we should live in sync with nature and protect our wetlands. Protect, for example, protect our wetlands, etc. Uh, protect our wetlands. Uh, living or, in living in sync with nature. Yes, sir. So if you are asked to live yes, in sir. sync with nature, what you are going to do? One or two things? One or two things, are I'd be uh, I'd be careful with my with the amount of water that I am consuming, you are consuming. which, which I am, sir. Okay, and uh, number one more? Number two, uh, use uh, public transportation more uh, if possible, okay. sir. Good, good. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Nivedita. We'll call you back. Thank you, sir. Thank you.